Grade 5 Math number 40, Methods to Help Multiply Decimals and Whole Numbers. As we talked about in our last video, we can use place values and models to help us multiply whole numbers to decimals. Using a model, we can use a square of 100 to represent a whole, 1, and then we can fill in 30 boxes to represent 30 hundredths, and then another 30 boxes to represent another 30 hundredths to do 30 hundredths times 2. 60 boxes would be filled in, which would be 60 hundredths. See? We can also draw them. If we had 3 tenths times 2, that means we had 3 tenths 2 times. 1 time, 2 times. That would give us 6 tenths. See? 3 here and 3 here would be 6, and it's tenths. We could draw it like this. If we had 3 times 2 and 5 tenths, we could have 2 and 5 tenths, 2 and 5 tenths, and then 2 and 5 tenths, 3 times, 1 time, 2 times, 3 times, and then we could count them. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then this 5 tenths and this 5 tenths counts as one whole one, because all the orange boxes would be filled, filled in on one of them, so that would be 7, and then we have 5 tenths in the last one. So we would have 7 and 5 tenths. See? 6 whole orange bars, 2 with 5 tenths in them makes one whole bar, and then the five, last 5 tenths makes 7 and 5 tenths. We can also use place value patterns to help us. If the problem was 7 and 45 hundredths times 3, we could write it as a whole number without the decimal point, just like this. And then we could do our math and put the decimal point back in when we were finished. This is how. If we had 7 and 45 hundredths times 3 and wanted to know the answer, we could just multiply the 7 and 45 hundredths times 100, and that would remove the decimal point, see? Because it would go boom, boom, and it would be gone. Then we could multiply, we could see that the answer would be the same thing multiplied by 100 and it would be removed. There would be no decimal point because it was none up here, see? To put the decimal place back, we would take this number and we would multiply it by one hundredth. So the 2,235 multiplied by a hundredth would put it back so there would be 35 hundredths because we're multiplying by one hundredth, see? Take it away, put it back. We can also count hops. If we had 3 and 52 hundredths times 4, we could do it like a regular multiplication problem and do 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 5 is 20, carry the 2, put the 0 down, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 more is 14, count the hops, 1, 2, 1, 2, and then we know that the decimal point goes right there between the 4 and the 0. Even if we had a big one, if we had 41 and 283 thousandths times 2, just do it like a regular multiplication problem. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 8 is 16. Carry the 1. Put the 6 down. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus the 1 is 5. 2 times 1 is 2. And then the 2 times 4 is 8. And count the hops. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And then we know the decimal point goes in between the 2 and the 5. And actually, this is the method I use. But... What I'm basically doing is this one. I'm actually doing this one, but in a shortcut way. If you do it this way, then you're totally understanding what you're doing with the place values and how the value is moving. If you do this way, you're just blindly counting hops, and if you don't really understand how the place values are changing because you're counting the hops, then that's not good. So you need to understand all these ways so that you really understand multiplying decimals. Not in some cheat or quick way, but that you really, really understand it. Okay? So, those are some different methods to help multiply decimals and whole numbers. And you can try using them. And as you get better with your multiplication, you can eventually just count hops and go quicker. Okay? I'll see you next video. We're going to keep talking about multiplying decimals. Bye.